What's up you guys, Alex here, and I just want to let you know what's going to be going on in this episode before it gets started. So, in this portion of the interview, Theo is going to be talking a little bit about his time overseas, where he played at, what his experience was like going over there, and um, also he'll be explaining a little bit more in detail about his second half of his college career over at Liberty as well. He'll let you know how that ended up going. And, um, matter of fact, I want to go ahead and just leave a description to one of his highlight tapes so you guys can actually see him play. This is some of his footage that he has from overseas last season, so it is pretty recent. That way you guys can go ahead and kind of see how he plays a little bit and make sure you know he's not just talking. He really is about what he's saying he's about. So, uh, with further ado, let's get into it. Peace. Like my junior year, I got, a, I got a waiver from NCAA because normally you have to sit out. The fall, the year after you transfer, you, you have to sit out a year. Mm -hmm. and then, but I got a waiver that allowed me to play right away. And that year, I, I ended up averaging like 10, 10 to 5. Yeah, that was one but of your best, yeah, best seasons. That, that probably was my best season. And then, like the last half, I was hurt the first half of the season, so they pretty much just eased me in. The second half of the season, I was averaging you like was 15. You was a primary, yeah. I was averaging like 15, 16. So. Yeah. Theo went from being one of the new guys who really wasn't getting much playing time until the second half, he literally was putting up 14, 15, 16, pretty consistently. Career high, uh, 26. Yes. Shot 18 free throws in a game. Yes, and he was slashing to the rim. He was shooting for a lot of people who don't know. He's pretty much an all-around player. He, he can do it all for his position, which is really, really rare to see these days at 6'7", to be able to handle the ball, be able to shoot from three, be able to drive to the lane. Um, be able to defend the other team's best player, be able to pin the ball off of the when people are going up for a layup. Man can literally do it all. So um, talk about how you felt at that point coming off of such a successful junior year, heading into your senior year. Uh, talk a little bit about that experience, as I'm sure you're probably thinking at that point, like I'm going from my junior year to my senior year, it's time for me to start thinking about the draft, uh, the next level. Um, Talk about what that experience was like for you. Ooh, I was really looking forward, like my junior year, I was definitely looking forward to my senior year. Um, but it just came to a real abrupt stop because like we didn't have a good season as a team. My junior year, we had a lot of injuries. Like our starting three man broke his foot seven games in, starting point guard broke his foot, second game of conference. Like we had nine new guys. They were on five, six of them were freshmen. Like, we had a brand new team pretty yeah. much, so we only won, like, nine games. But, I mean, as a squad, like, everybody held it together. Like, we came into every game thinking, yeah, we can win. Yeah, it chance, wasn't like yeah. we just didn't come in there and just was, we, but we, we did what we could. Mm -hmm. But coach ended up getting fired. Literally, at the, the we were conference tournament. We were at the conference tournament. Came back to the hotel. Get a call. Team meeting. Team meeting an hour later. He's like, they just let me know that I was fired. We had, I'd probably say four. That was the first time I ever cried for a coach because he was one of the few people I felt like cared about me at the time. Like, yeah. he gave me another chance. Like, he was checking in on me day to day. And it just, it, it really just made me real upset. And, like, not knowing who was going to come in. Like, I had people tell me I should have left. Like, I should have left right when they told me, right when they said he got fired. But... You didn't want to do that, especially since that. you had such a successful season. Yeah. You're already coming off of being a transfer from another school. Yeah. You want to build something there, so I can understand that 100%. So uh, once the new coach came in, uh, I'll let you kind of explain a little bit about what happened from there because it seemed like everything kind of just started to go downhill a little bit mm -hmm. from there. So what was it like once your new coach came in and what kind of interaction did you have with him? I mean, first thoughts, I thought he was cool. Like, I thought he was a cool dude. Like, didn't really say much. He was like, hey, Richard McKay, like, nice to meet you. Glad to be your guys as a head coach or whatever. Everything seemed sweet. But three days later, we had a team meeting, calls everybody in. Me, one of them, two of the other seniors are suspended, like, off rip. Like... <laughs> And, and we, keep in mind, season hadn't had the season started no, at this point. Had, it was like March, April. Season had not even started yet. Like <laughs> it was like March, April, and he came in, suspended us three for the month of April. And keep in mind, these are his best, his best we're players only, that he has. We're the only three returning seniors. We're the only three people that really played like that that year. And we're all suspended. He ended up kicking Joe and Joe and David off that summer uh, before the school year ended. 
So basically they were stuck. Like I thought I was going too. I thought they was gonna get rid of me, but they ended up keeping me, giving me a chance out for whatever reason. Yeah. And honestly, I should have just left when they kicked them when they kicked them two off because our I told you our starting three man broke his foot and got seven games in. Mm -hmm. So they they gave him another year because he redshirted that year. Yeah. As soon as he transferred to Ole Miss, I should have left. Because <laughs> that's when things went. That's when things started going downhill. He transferred to Ole Miss, and then things just started going downhill. But I mean, I don't. I can't sit up here and I don't want to down talk him at all. Oh, but okay. it was just we didn't see eye to eye. I didn't really feel like he wanted me there from the get go. Mm -hmm. So Sorry. things didn't really work out your senior mm -hmm. year. Um, so at this point, senior year of school is done. You've already finished your eligibility, so you're not, el well actually, were you still el eligible? Did you I have one more eligible. year? Yeah, I still had another year. Okay, so you had one more year available, but at this point you did already have your degree and all that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you had your degree. I'm sure you're already thinking about the next level. Um, were you thinking, okay, well, let me try to see if I can go to another school and maybe play another year there before? Well, I was thinking about it, but Honestly, the, the the whole thing that it just took a lot of toll on me. Mm -hmm. Going, just I was just so redundant with school. Like I didn't want to go to school anymore. I did not like school. Yeah. Like I've always been a very smart guy, very creative guy, but just school is not for me. I just don't like school. <laughs> yeah. Which is so fine. Which is fine. I just I decided that I just thought it was best for me to go pro. Mm -hmm. um, and what was that like once you made that decision? Like, dang, okay. Here I am, I'm gonna put all my eggs into one basket. Um, I don't wanna pursue anything else 100%. I wanna pursue, pursue moving. Bruh, how are you just gonna keep interrupting me like that? <laughs> so you decided that you wanna just put all your eggs in one basket, pursue hoop 100%, uh, no distractions, you don't want a, a, a daytime job, like this is what you wanna do for a living. Yep. Um, once you committed yourself to doing that, what was it like for you as far as finding an agent, uh, did you have any idea on where you wanted to hoop at? Like, what was that experience like for you? I mean, I didn't know nothing, honestly. But I didn't end up, I really didn't even have an agent last year. That was, which was the crazy part. Like, I made it over there without having an agent. Mm -hmm. And I hit, up my, I hit up my coach for my junior year. I was like, yo, like, I just went pro. And he was like, really? And where did, you, where, did, where did you get signed to, by the way? Uh, I got, I, I did, told everybody I was going pro. And then a week later, I got a call from a Kosovo, which is like a little subsection of Serbia. And they were like, yeah, we want you to come out. It was a little quick job. Mm -hmm. Didn't end up, that didn't work out. Like coach was saying that they signed another p older player about in the, ahead of me. Cause they didn't think that I was like, I'm a freshman, I mean, I'm fresh out. Like they wanted a vet. Yeah. But we were playing together, everything. But they have like overseas. They have a lot of rules where you can't have a, you can only have a certain amount of foreign players. Mm -hmm. And like we already had five. I was the sixth, and I was the youngest player. So it was like the coach was basically like, "Well, I don't know how much I'm gonna play you, so I don't want you to necessarily just sit on the bench. So it's your decision. Like, what do you want to do?" And I was like, "Well, I want to play." And he was like, "Well, I have a coach. I have a team that would like to have you, and they're, they're like, you're definitely gonna play." And uh, I was like, "All right, well." What's up? Like, get there. Team doesn't even give me a contract. Like, I'm literally just out there. I'm practicing with the team and stuff. Like, they're telling me, yeah, we're gonna give you a contract. You're gonna give you. We're gonna give you a contract. Like, I'm sleeping on a pullout couch, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm literally sleeping on a pullout couch. You know, in an apartment in Macedonia. Like, <laughs> exactly. So at this point, mentally, how how are you feeling at this point? Are you are you feeling like you should quit? Um, Mentally, what was that like for you? I mean, it's obviously tough mentally. Like, I'm across the world by myself. Like, I don't know what's about to happen. So, I'm over here just stuck in Macedonia trying to figure out what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm hitting people up like, yo, like, your team, your team needs a three-man. Like, what's up? Get a call from a... Uh, I hit the coach from the last, from the first team that I was at, actually. And he was like, hey, like, I have a team in Bulgaria, they wanna, they wanna, they'll let you come try out. There's no guarantee that you'll finish the year there, but it's something so you can have some money. Like they didn't even pay me when I was in Macedonia. I got no money. 
And how long were you out there for? A month. I was out there for a month. So he didn't get paid a whole month. Luckily, I had a decent amount from what I got when I was in the first country. Mm -hmm. so like they paid me for the month I was there. I was there for like a month, a month and a half. And then I went to Macedonia. They didn't give me nothing. They didn't even treat me right. Mm -hmm. I was, and I was one of the best players on the team. Like even the first team I was on, I was one of the better players. I was just younger. I was just one of the younger players that was not making as much as the older players. So yeah. I feel like they have to play the people that's making more money. Yeah. So I get to uh, get to Bulgaria. It was a cool situation. Like I, I literally get there, eight hour bus ride, get straight off the bus, go straight to practice. I have one practice with the team. We have a game like the next day get in the game. I played like 25 minutes. I went like 3 for 13, I think. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like I was just jacking. I just was missing because I was off a little bit. I just took an 8-hour bus ride. Uncomfortable as hell. Yeah. Like 8-hour bus ride. No practice with the team. Didn't know none of the sets, pretty much. 3 for 13, first game. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, like, I didn't play bad, though. We almost won the game, too. Yeah. Next game, dropped 13. I went 13 on like 4 for 5. And we win. We win. We beat the second best team in the, in the in the conference at that time. Okay. Third game, play the best team in the conference, beat them. I had like two points, but I played really good. Like only shot once, I think. Mm -hmm. And then the next game, they played me like seven minutes. I played I played like twenty minutes the second game and like twenty minutes the third game. Then I played like seven minutes the last game. We get blown out. Like we get blown out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They cut me after that. Nah. They cut me after that. I was like, well, you're a really good player, but this and that. And I was like, man, whatever. Like, y'all wouldn't even put the ball. When I when the ball was in my hands, like, I was literally busting the starters in practice every day. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like, it was like, I just wasn't good. And, like, I'm just some sucker. Like, I'm a six seven two guard. I'm having, like, it wasn't even, it wasn't even like that. Exactly. So I come home. I'm home after that.